Hi, my name is Scott Simpson, and today we're going to be talking about dipole moments. Before we cover dipole moments, you should also review uh, Lewis structures to help you uh, determine the structure of the molecule that we're trying to determine the dipole moment for, and maybe vectors if you're interested in that. Um, it's more of a physics-y type topic, but it's still applicable. And also, um, you'll need to know a little bit about electronegativities. So, let's get into it. All right. So a dipole moment is often important for colligative properties, so determining um, uh, if an electron is going to have a type of dipole-dipole interaction and a few other interactions. We'll talk more about that later on. But let's just get into um, dipole moments for molecules. So let's think of the simplest molecule we can, which is a diatomic molecule. So let's uh, look at hydrochloric acid. So we have HCl here. And what we have to do is we have to determine which way the dipole is going to point. So in chemistry, we usually imagine the dipole pointing from the least electronegative to the most electronegative atom. Um, but in physics, they kind of do it the other way around. We're not going to be concerned with the physics way. Let's just look at the chemistry way. So we know that hydrogen is less electronegative than chlorine. So if we were looking at the charge or the electron density around this guy, it would look something kind of like that. Where, I don't know if you can actually see this because of the video, but no, that's a terrible one. Let's try this guy. So, something like that. And what would end up happening is, since chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, it would sap some electron density away from the hydrogen, leaving a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. Now, if we were to write out the dipole moment, the dipole moment would point something like this, where we have the tail end Like this. Now a dipole moment has a direction to it. It is a vector quantity. So what I mean by that is it has a force and it has a direction. So a magnitude and a direction. In this case it's pointing towards the chlorine. Alright, now let's move up to a more specific or a more difficult example. Let's look at something like Let's look at actually a more simple example. Let's look at another diatomic. Let's look at hydrogen gas. Now the question is, is will hydrogen gas have a dipole moment? Well, if you notice, these two are the same atoms, so they have the same electronegativity. The way you can sort of think about this is there are two dipoles, one pointing this way and one pointing this way. Now these dipoles have equal force or equal um, magnitude, so they'll end up canceling out. The way to think about this is, let's say I have a clone of myself and we both one, he's positioned behind this board, and we both push on the board. We both have the same amount of strength. We both have the same position. The board's not going to move anywhere, right? It's the same thing with atoms. You just have to think about it a little differently. So in this case, with our diatomic atom, our diatomic H, we're not going to have a dipole moment. So the overall dipole moment for this guy going to be zero. There's no overall dipole moment. All right, let's move on to another example. What if we look at water? Water is one of the simplest molecules. It's very important for us, right? And these are the lone pairs up here. 
Now, what I like to do is I like to draw a dipole moment for each bond. And then, since they're vector quantities, they add up together, so their components add up. So what I mean by that is if I have a dipole that's pointing like that, and one that's pointing like that, the overall dipole moment, which I'm going to draw in green, is going to point like that. All right, so let's draw our just bond dipole moments for our bonds. So the first bond we have is an H and an oxygen. So, look, noticing our trends in electronegativity, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So we have a dipole moment pointing that way. And we could also have one for this bond, like that. Now, what about the overall dipole moment? Well, since they're both pointing up this way, there's going to be some cancellation of the vectors. So, what we're going to have is an overall dipole moment, which I'm going to also draw in green. Hopefully you can see this. Something like that. All right. Now, let's move to another example that is also triatomic. That is always on general chemistry tests. We're going to look at CO2. So half the battle in determining if these, di these dipole moments are correct is knowing that you have the correct Lewis structures. So we'll cover that later on. Or in a separate tutorial. All right. So let's draw our bond dipole moments. So if we notice, should, it should be pointing from the carbon to the oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So there should be a dipole pointing that way. And then we should also have a dipole pointing in this direction. Now if you look, these dipoles are equal, but they're opposing. It's like if I have my clone and we're both pushing on one another, we're not going to move anywhere because we have the same amount of strength. So for this, there's an overall dipole moment of zero. So there is no dipole moment for this molecule. So no dipole. Now, what about something like SO2? Will SO2 have a dipole? So, and there is a lone pair on the sulfur. If I didn't have the lone pair on there, the way it would have been drawn is something like CO2. In that case, if I would have had that without the lone pairs, then the sulfur would have a partial pot there. Will it would have a positive formal charge, which is incorrect. All right. So we'll also cover molecular geometries later on, but that's an important topic to know that this will be kind of a bent orientation. So what we'll have is a dipole moment pointing from the sulfur to the oxygen. Sulfur is less electronegative than oxygen. Pointing that way and this one's pointing that way. And since there's this lone pair up here, it's actually bent. So the way I've drawn it isn't pictorially correct. It should be more something along the lines of that. But so, since these vectors are not equal and opposing, well, they are equal, but they're not opposing one another, there's going to be a dipole moment, a net dipole moment, pointing this way. So, as I've demonstrated, dipole moments are fairly simple to understand and easy to do. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below um, in the YouTube section for the comments. And thank you very much.